Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord uh, for another day's journey. We thank God for how he has truly blessed us and kept us together one more time as we are approaching this uh, July 4th weekend, um, praying that everyone would be safe and praying that everyone would celebrate in a responsible way. Uh, truly, God has uh, truly been good to each and every one of us. He has blessed us with some awesome weather, and we thank God for him and his mercy that he has shown toward us in the name of Jesus. I'm kind of starting my Bible class early on today, uh, so we uh, hope that uh, those that are tuning in will get that opportunity uh, to come together with us as we are delving into the scriptures for today. I want to welcome you to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, uh, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508, where I am the lead pastor, Suffolk and Bishop elect, Pastor Frankie L. Quinn. And we thank God for my lovely wife, Tracy Quinn, and our uh, leadership team that is here uh, with us and the saints of God that uh, worship with us on a regular basis. We certainly do thank God. Uh, for them and we thank God for you as well for tuning in to following us and uh, Associating uh, with us and we ask you today if you would uh, share share this uh, broadcast with those that uh, that You may know uh, we're going to be talking today about the victory that is in Christ Jesus how to walk in the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ and that's going to be our subject on today. And we uh, would want you to share it and put it out there so that others may uh, tune in and uh, hear uh, what thus saith the Lord. I'm truly excited. I'm always excited about the word of God. I'm excited about opportunities that God places before us. Um, I'm excited about them, but not always uh, comfortable with them sometimes. But uh, that's how we get stretched in the Lord. That's how the Lord uh, causes us to grow. I was taught a long time ago that God takes you out of your comfort zone. And, and that's how growth uh, begins and that's how growth starts. So everything that uh, the Lord allows, um, I just fall back on the scripture uh, that says we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And that's the kind of mindset God wants us to have that mindset where we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So we want to go through the Lord in prayer. Uh, once again, we just want to remember everybody, remember uh, those that are in the hospitals, those that are bereaving, those that are going through uh, financially, um, spiritually, and morally. And let us pray for all those who are also standing strong in the Lord, those that are uh, holding up the bloodstained banner, as it were, those that are walking worthy of their vocation, wherewith they've been called, that the Lord will continue to strengthen them as they make this particular journey. Also, let us pray earnestly, earnestly for our leaders. Uh, I've never seen a time uh, like these times and the seriousness of truly praying for your leaders, both politically uh, and spiritually because there are attacks that are going on and it's affecting it's affecting uh, everybody everybody is affected uh, by the things that are going on in the world right now both spiritually and naturally so if there's ever been a time to pray um, now is the time to pray if there's ever been a time to seek God's face now is the time to seek God's face and to turn from any wicked way. Now is the time to worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, believe me when I tell you, uh, now is the time. Because um, as you can see and know that there's things that are going on in the world today that is not going on that uh, we have never seen in this particular generation. So uh, the urgency and the necessity for pray for prayer is um, at the utmost priority and uh, to seeking the Lord and to uh, walking in his ways 
is of the utmost priority. Uh, there's never been a time uh, such as these, and, and now is the time to turn our hearts unto the Lord. Let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We say thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you've blessed each and every one of us, how have you kept us in the center of your will. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to show forth your glory, to show forth your might, to show forth your anointing. We thank you, Lord, for each and every request that has been made known before you. We ask you, Lord, that you have your way in our midst, sanctify our hearts and our spirit and our soul and our mind. Holy Ghost, have your way in the name of Jesus. Open up our understanding in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Last week, uh, we talked about uh, victory in Jesus, and we essentially established through the scriptures that uh, Jesus gained us or won us the victory uh, when through his death, burial, and resurrection. And today I want to talk about how to walk in that victory. And that's going to take effort on your part and on my part. Uh, the Bible says that we are saved by grace and that through faith um, and not of works, least any man should boast. And um, when the scripture says that uh, our salvation is not of works, there's nothing that we can do or we have done to attain it. Christ done or paid it all. Uh, but you believe in him through faith, through the faith in what he has done. And because of that faith, it releases the grace of God that that passes all understanding, wherein then God can have mercy upon us. And then because uh, he can have mercy upon us, uh, we can live peaceably with him. So the elements, or I call them the ingredients of salvation, is grace, mercy, and peace. Uh, so we uh, want to uh, thank God for that. And as we uh, move forward uh, in our, our Christian living. Uh, we have to uh, do certain things to, in order to maintain a right relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, you cannot um, live any kind of way. There's a doctrine. I haven't heard it taught or preached uh, in a while, and thank God, because it's a damnable doctrine. Uh, once saved, always saved. You can lose out on your salvation uh, by sinning, by continual sinning and forsaking uh, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So therefore, the Bible uh, has instructed us uh, that we might uh, walk in a, a place of sanctification. Um, what I mean by that is, um, though uh, I have a, a desire uh, within us to, to sin, we have a desire within us uh, that falls short of the glory of God, if you allow me to say it that way. But uh, God has infused us and empowered us through salvation with the gift of the Holy Ghost, which gives us strength and power then to resist evil desires, to resist uh, committing sin, and to uh, transform our minds into something new, into something very special. Uh, as we get ready to go into these scriptures on today, I want you to prepare your hearts to receive the word of God. And I know that uh, some things that we're going to talk about may be controversial to some, and some may uh, not have heard it on this wise, and some may even totally reject what I'm about to say. But I want to say unto you to consider what I say, search the scripture, and uh, God will give thee understanding. So in order for us to, to walk in victory, I want you to turn with me to the book of Colossians, Colossians uh, chapter number three, Colossians chapter number three. And as we have said earlier, uh, I wanna talk my subject tonight uh, is walking in victory, walking in victory. 
And what I mean by uh, walking in victory, to walk is a uh, literally a Jewish metaphor for conducting or behaving oneself. Uh, the Bible, especially uh, the Old Testament, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the book of the law or the Pentateuch, um, it describes how one is to behave. And uh, God is concerned about your behavior. Even if you were to study the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, the first uh, four deal with your relationship with God, and the last six deals with your relationship with man, how you are to conduct yourselves one to another. So the Ten Commandments really uh, gives us co a condensed version of what God expects of us in our moral and spiritual conduct, in our sport, spiritual and moral conduct. So uh, when we talk about walking, it, like I said, it deals with one's behavior and how one is to conduct themselves. And the Bible, especially now we're in the New Testament, it teaches us how to guide our behavior, especially uh, the epistles that were written. They tell us how we ought to guide our behavior. Uh, even the book of Proverbs, it tells you how to live. I teach often uh, my young people that they ought to study the book of Proverbs because it is a manual literally written to young people and for young people on how to live their life. Um, as we get ready to, to fall into the scriptures, um, walking in victory, walking in victory. Uh, we are also to perform good works in view of our salvation. Notice, uh, salvation is free. Uh, uh, it doesn't, you don't work to receive salvation. But once you get saved, God expects you to live a certain way. God does not expect you to live a willy-nilly life. God expects you to do certain things and to live a certain way and to uh, uh, walk in good works. The scripture says you are God's workmanship created excuse me, created in Christ Jesus, prepared unto good works. And the Bible tells us that uh, also that we are, are, are saved and we have been redeemed. Second uh, Colossians chapter number two and verse number 12 says, we have literally been buried with Jesus Christ in baptism, wherein also we have been risen through him, through the faith of the operation of God, who have raised him from the dead. And the scripture says that if any man be in Christ, they are a new creature. All old things have uh, passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you are literally in Christ Jesus uh, through baptism and through the infilling of the Holy Ghost, you have become a new creation, a new creature, a new creation, uh, wherein God expects you to not live according to the works of the flesh uh, or the, the deeds of sin, but God expects you to live after righteousness and holiness. That's why Paul said in the book of uh, Romans chapter number eight, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, notice, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, notice, have made me free from the law of sin and death. So that the righteousness of the law or God's word might be fulfilled in us so that we can perform the will of God. Uh, Jesus uh, died for us. He freed us from our old lifestyle so that we may join ourselves to God and live a righteous lifestyle. And that has to be in the forefront of your mind 
when you think about salvation, when you think about deliverance, that, that Jesus freed me uh, from my old sinful ways and that he, he freed me so that I can live a righteous life according to God's holy ways. Uh, Jesus, uh, in, early on in his ministry, he said, the spirit of the Lord is found in uh, the book of uh, St. Luke, chapter number four. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's Jesus' assignment. He is anointed. He's anointed to heal you. He's a, anointed to free you. He's anointed to, 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 to rebuke all the power of the enemy that would come up against you. So therefore, uh, that freedom that we have in Christ Jesus has been manifested in our lives when we accept him as our Lord and our Savior. So tonight, uh, we really want to continue our focus then on uh, walking in that victory that Jesus has uh, afforded to us. There's a song that uh, we often sing, uh, victory, victory shall be mine when I hold my peace and allow the Lord to fight my battles. Victory shall be mine. And, that's, and that, that song is true. Uh, when you do certain things, when you hold your peace and allow the Lord to fight your battles, victory is yours. And there's another um, uh, connotation or another connection to that. You have to also do certain other things in order to walk in that victory and to maintain that lifestyle of victory in your life. So. Uh, tonight we want to discuss that. Uh, we want you to go with us to uh, Colossians chapter number 3 and uh, verse number 1. Notice what it says. It says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Colossians chapter 3 verse number 1. It says, if ye be risen, if you are alive or born again of the water and of the spirit, as Jesus uh, exclaimed to Nicodemus in St. John chapter number three, he told Nicodemus that he had to be born again of the water and of the spirit. And that water baptism deals with buried with him in baptism. Um, it literally is symbolic to putting to death, putting to death that old man, that, 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 that sinful man. That's what Paul was talking about when he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of sinful death? And that wretched man is that old lifestyle. Um, we have to get rid of our old lifestyle, that sinful lifestyle. So we're buried with him in baptism, and then we're raised up uh, symbolically and spiritually uh, to walk then or to live in the newness of life. So uh, our, our, we are to have new behavior, new conduct. Uh, those are the things that God is looking for. Now notice, it says here, um, uh, we then, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Uh, we ought then to seek those things, those things, those things, righteous things, holy things, things that uh, be of God, things that please God. Notice he says, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. And Christ sitting at the right hand of God is a seat of power and authority. Christ has power and authority. And he's also there sitting to make intercession for you and I. That's why the scripture says, 
for us to come boldly to the throne of grace so that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Uh, there's never a time where an individual uh, it should be, if you're struggling, if you're uh, fighting and warring against sin and warring against your evil desires, you should always come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer, asking him for his help. Because the Bible says that Jesus was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil that is affecting your life. There's never a time wherein we should be afraid to come to Jesus Christ who paid the price for you and I for our salvation. So notice the scripture. It says, uh, man, my God. He says, uh, Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. And that's a seat of power and authority. And that's a position of intercession for you and I. He's there to make intercession for us. He's there uh, to, to, to rule over us, to watch over us, and to supply all of our needs according to what? His riches and glory. <laughs> so we see here then, verse number two. He says, set your affection. Though your affection is your desires, your heart, your mind. Set your affections on things above, uh, uh, not on the earth. So when you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, you've been literally bought with a price and you are not your own. So therefore, uh, he's saying that uh, be not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So therefore, you literally have to change your focus. You have to change your focus and get your focus off of the things that are on this earth. But you have to think spiritual minded. You have to be realize that you are a spiritual being living a natural experience. And now you, 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 your thought process or your thought pattern has been raised to think on the things that are above. Think on the things that pertain to God. Think on the things that pertain to God. This literally deals with proper focus. Your proper focus should be Christ and the life of God. Of, of Jesus Christ above. In other words, your, your focus should be what literally how I should live this life uh, according to the word of God. So therefore, my focus then has to be of God. The scripture says, seek ye first. This is what Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. So if you be risen with Christ, you've got to set your affection on things above. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That has to be your primary focus 100% of the time, 100% of the time. <laughs> My God, you've got to literally uh, train your mind to be spiritual. And that doesn't mean that you are, 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 are not uh, in tune with what's going on around you, but you're in tune with what's going on around you as it relates to the kingdom of God, as it relates to his righteousness. And righteousness deals with right behavior. You, you're in tuned uh, with, with, with God's kingdom so that God can give you instructions on how to behave yourself in this natural world so you can maintain the victory that Jesus Christ has won for you on Calvary's mountain. My God, hallelujah, my God. Jesus has gained us the victory and he died on the cross for all of our sins. 
And because he is our Lord, when we accept him as our Lord and our Savior, we fall under his rule and authority. Therefore, we have to humble ourselves and submit ourselves to his authority. And then uh, when we, as we receive instruction from him on how to conduct ourselves on this earth, that's how we live. That's how we live. So let me move on. Um, uh, what the scripture is saying here is set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. So notice there's a switch in the, in the, in the mindset. Uh, what should I put in my mind? What should I let affect my mind? Uh, spiritual things should be put in my mind <laughs> by God. Uh, spiritual things should be sought by the child of God. Uh, you should be seeking daily for a spiritual transformation. You should be seeking God and, and seeking the Lord, as the scripture says, while he may be found and calling upon him while he is near. Not on things of this earth. Uh, are the things of this earth, uh, they, 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 they can weigh you down. Uh, if you, all you consumed about is, is cars and, and land and uh, a, a job, thank you, Lord. If you're consumed about those things, then you're not consumed about the things that be of God. Uh, the scripture says this very plainly. It says, it tells us that wherever your treasure is, there so also will be your heart. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart is also. So, so uh, you got to think about this. When you're living through the day, what are you thinking the most about? Uh, are you thinking more about spiritual things? Or are you thinking more about carnal things? And, and if you're thinking about more carnal things, then you have to change. You have to switch and think more about spiritual things. Um, because, because those carnal things, it's like the sower and the, the sower and the seed. Thank you, Lord. The sower and the seed, wherein the seed, the sower sowed seed into the ground. And, and when they sold that seed into the ground, the Bible says that, you know, uh, uh, then uh, came the, the cares of this life and it choked that word. It choked that word out of the individual. Some fell upon stony ground, some fell by the wayside. And, and those things uh, we have to be mindful of. If I'm, if I'm trying to be spiritual, I can't allow uh, the devil to come and steal the word out of my heart through distractions. If, if I'm trying to be spiritual and build myself up, I've got to cultivate my mind so that that word can penetrate my heart and grow. Uh, I have to root out uh, those things that will choke that word in my life. The Bible says the cares of this life will choke that word. It will, it will stop the victory that Jesus has manifested for us uh, or, or for you in your life if you become distracted. Uh, the, the Bible says that, uh, that he that beareth good fruit uh, the one that bears it with patience. Uh, and that's what you have to do. You have to be patient and allow God's word to penetrate your heart so that you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> All right, so we see here. Uh, the next verse says, it says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid in God. So um, that's literally true. How, when did you die? When you got baptized in the name of Jesus. That old man, that old lifestyle was put to death and was buried. And you became alive 
uh, and your life has been hid in Christ with God. Your life has been hid in Christ with God. Let me say that again. When you get born again of the water and of the spirit, uh, your life is hid in Christ with God. Paul put it this way. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who, who gave his life for me, who loves me. So you've got to realize then, beloved, that, that it is no more I, but it's the Christ that liveth inside. And my life now is not my own. Uh, it's hid in Christ Jesus, who has and will always maintain victory for you and I. I like the scripture where it says, a man shall be as a hiding place, a shelter in the time of the storm. And that hiding place means a covert. It means a shelter. It means a watch over. And when, when life comes and life tries to attack us and, and overtake us, um, it affects the child of God differently if they continue to manifest uh, good works and good deeds in Christ Jesus. If they continue to walk in him worthy of the vocation wherewith they have been called. If they live a righteous life, you can maintain your sheltered position in Christ Jesus. My God, hallelujah. I'm trying to make that as plain as I can. So notice then, let us move on. Uh, verse, verse number four, uh, Colossians 3 and 4, it says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then he shall appear with him in glory. In other words, that should be our focus. Our focus should be to live a Christ-like life and focus on those things that are above because my goal is to when he appears, I'm going to appear with him. Notice that verse, uh, uh, Colossians 3 and 4. It says, when Christ, who is our life? He's your life. He's the strength of your life. He's the source of your life. It's like he's the marrow of, of all things living within you. Bone marrow is what uh, carries the, the DNA of life, if you allow me to say it that way. And, and Christ is our bone marrow. He is our life. He's the strength of our life. He's the sustenance of the life, our life. Uh, David said it like this, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. He's my empowerment. And that's how God is with us through Christ Jesus. He empowers us. He gives us what we need in order to meet uh, every uh, obstacle or every condition and situation that may come upon us because our life is hid in him. So then when he says, ye shall also appear with him in glory. That's our purpose, my God. That's our purpose, that we may appear before him in glory. So we see here, notice then, this is what we're after. He says, because of that, Mortify, uh, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. So I've got to do something if I'm going to maintain this victory that Jesus has, has given unto me. I have to mortify, which means put to death. Amen. I've got to stop living that old lifestyle. I can't live after the flesh because if I live after the flesh, I shall die. I've got to walk in the spirit and mortify, continue to manifest and put to death the works of the flesh. Now, these are the works of the flesh, the, those things that are in our members, because walking with Jesus is a process of sanctification. 
It's a process of putting on and taking off. A process of putting on and taking off. Take putting, putting off those evil and wicked things and putting on righteousness. Putting on a cloak of righteousness. <laughs> My God. Notice what he says. Mortify, put to death your members which are upon the earth. Uh, your, your, your earthly, fleshly members. Uh, all right? Notice what he says. Uh, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, uh, covetousness, which is idolatry. Here in this particular verse, uh, Paul is really after sexual sins. Uh, a person's sexual desire is huge. And in order to keep your sexual desires under control, you have to do some things and walk in the anointing and in the power that God has afforded you through Christ Jesus. So notice what he says. He says, uh, which are upon this earth fornication. Everywhere you go, people are fornicating. People, it should not be named among us in the church, but people in the church fornicate. Amen? And, and we, why? Because they have not put it in their hearts and in their minds that they can overcome it and walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. Uh, there's people in the church, I got to say it uh, conversely, that are not fornicating. <laughs> when I say the church, I'm talking about uh, the physical building. Um, uh, people that fornicate are, are not in the body of Christ. Again, I say, people who are fornicating are not in the body of Christ. They may go to somebody's church building, but they are not in the body of Christ because all sin is without the body. You cannot commit sin and say you are a part of the body of Christ. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. If you do commit sin and you fornicate, you must confess it so that the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you and purge you from all unrighteousness. Now notice, Paul says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Amen. So you don't live a lifestyle of fornicating. And then after you get through fornicating, you say, oh, well, I'm just going to repent. <laughs> because that's not the definition of repentance. The definition of repentance is one who turns away from that evil behavior and turns to God never to go back to that behavior again. Thank you, Lord. My God, I don't want to get off my Bible study, but I don't want to lead people astray either. So we see here then, he says, mortify uh, your members upon this earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection. That means evil, lustful desires, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is adultery. Notice what he says here. For... Uh, for which things, for which things sake the wrath, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children, notice, of disobedience. Those that are committing and doing these particular sins are, are under uh, penalty of the wrath of God. Amen? So, so you don't want that. That's, that's, that's opposite of walking in the victory that is in Christ Jesus. Now notice, uh, verse number seven, in which also ye walk, and that word walk there means that you have that kind of behavior. Uh, you lived in those things, and sometime you lived in them. Uh, so there was a time that we didn't mind fornicating. We didn't mind lying and stealing. <laughs> we didn't mind doing evil and wicked works. Uh, we, but when you come to Christ, you have to forsake all of that. Uh, when you come to Christ, you can't have an extra girlfriend. You can't, 
you can't you can't cheat on your wife you can't watch pornography when you come to Christ you can't do those things and then when you receive Christ uh, hear me now when you receive Christ you don't your, your desire changes wherein those things should be looked on as exceeding sinful you don't want to do those things um, I used to smoke when I was out there in the world um, um, now I hate smoking uh, you couldn't pay me to, to, to light up a cigarette and start smoking. Uh, why? Because my appetite has changed. My desires have changed. And, and because I have uh, crucified or mortified that part of the flesh, it's no longer a fight to me. It's no longer a desire of mine. I want to please God. I want to please and walk with him. And when an individual's desire is to please God and walk with him, God somehow, he transforms the individual. He renews the individual. And the desires change within the individual. Uh, that's, that's all becoming that new creature. Created in Christ Jesus, prepared unto good works. Now notice, let me move on. He says, but now you also put off all of these. Notice what he says, verse number eight. Put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, uh, filthy communication out of your mouth. And notice what he said. Uh, uh, before he's talking about evil deeds. Now he's talking about uh, emotions that lead to wicked and evil behavior. Uh, when, when you are a child of God, you also have to keep your emotions under check. Uh, you can't allow yourself to become so full of hatred and anger that you lash out. You can't allow yourself to become so full of hatred and anger that you start cussing. Um, I'm sure you've probably been around people who've gotten so mad that, 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 that they start cussing. And, you know, because they're expressing that, that anger and, that, and that, 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 that's within them. God does not want you to have filthy communication. He wants you to put that off. And notice, uh, he says you've got to put off all of these. We're talking today about living and walking in the victory that's in Jesus Christ. Salvation is free. In order for you to maintain that salvation... If you allow me to say it this way, you have to be in compliance with God's standard of righteousness. If you're not, the wrath of God will come upon you. Thank you, Lord. My God. I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but we've got help of the Lord. We've got uh, our, his word. We've got so much. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. We've got the blood of Jesus. We've got God's grace and mercy to help us. We've got the long suffering of God to help us to overcome, my God. And But you have to utilize the tools that God has given to you uh, and to resist evil. The scripture tells us, it talks about it in the book of James. When lust have conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. Uh, the scripture tells us to, to basically what we ought to do is to resist the devil. Resist the devil steadfast. When, when there's a temptation for me to come to do fornication, I have to resist the devil. When there's a temptation for you to cuss, to, to lie, to watch pornography, for to do whatever that's evil or contrary to the will of God, you've got to resist that temptation. And all of that temptation is not of the devil. Some of that temptation is the, uh, the, the evil that's operating in your flesh. The evil desires that have to be purged out or mortified through the Spirit by obedience to the Word of God. Hallelujah. By God, I'm trying to make it plain. 
So if you're going to maintain that victory, you have to do such things as what I'm telling you on today. My God, notice what he says. Uh, uh, verse number eight, he says, but now put off these things, anger, malice, wrath, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. He tells you don't lie one to another, seeing you have put off the old man uh, with his deeds. Uh, you put off the old man with his deeds. So don't be, don't, so therefore don't lie. Don't, don't, you don't have to lie. Uh, you've got power over lying. You've got power over evil deeds. That's the victory that we gain through Jesus Christ. Now notice, he says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor circumcision nor uncircumcision, uh, uh, but put on, oh, I'm sorry, verse number three and 10, it says, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So uh, you have put on the new man. That new man is Christ Jesus. And uh, uh, that's why Paul said, there's no more I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by his faith. Amen. The faith of the son of God who died for me and loved me. You've got to realize that, that I'm a creature of God, that God has sanctified me, that I've been bought with a price, I'm not my own. And, and those old ways and those old deeds have to be put away because I've been born again of the water and of the spirit. So he says, put on therefore as he let God uh, verse number 12, it says, put on, therefore, as elect of God, chosen of God, as elect, chosen. You've been chosen. You've been bought with a price. Hallelujah. You've been chosen by God. Put on holy and beloved bowels of mercy. Now notice how, how, how the child of God has to walk in this earth. You've got to be merciful. The scripture says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Amen? You've got to be a merciful individual, and you've got to extend mercy to every and anybody, not, 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 not if you think they deserve it. You should extend mercy to anybody, especially to those that don't deserve it. That's true mercy. Hallelujah. That's what God did for us. Notice, he said, uh, put on, uh, therefore, as elect of God. That word put on means that you have to do something. Verse number 12, you have to do this. Uh, put on, as elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercy. You got to be kind, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. Uh, you've got to do these things, my God. If you're going to maintain the victory that's in Christ Jesus, uh, you have to, verse 13, forbear one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also you do ye. Amen. And above all these things, put on love or charity, which is the bond of perfection. Now, if you do these things, if you operate in these things, verse 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body and be thankful. Verse the 16, notice what he says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing you in psalms and hymns uh, and in spiritual psalms, singing grace, uh, in your singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. And uh, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks uh, to God and the Father by him. Now, the sum total of what we just read in your hearing 
If you're going to manifest the victory or walk in the victory that is in Christ Jesus, you literally have to set your affection, your desires on things above. Recognize that you've been risen with Christ, that you are a new creature. All the old things, my old lifestyle has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And as you're walking then, you have to take on the attributes of God, mercy, holiness, uh, forgiving. That's what the scripture says, loving, amen? And, and, and walking in love and, and not quarreling and arguing and fighting with people. You've got to recognize that, that, that because I'm in Christ Jesus, I'm not going to think on everything. I'm not going to allow my mind to be captivated by any and everything. Why? Because I'm a child of God and I've got to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith God has called me. And I'm not going to allow the enemy to come into my mind to stop me from moving forward in God. In Ephesians chapter number four, verse 24, it says, and that ye put on the new man, put the new man on, <laughs> which is created after, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. Notice what he says. Put on the new man, which is designed. That's that word creation means, designed. Is designed in righteousness. That righteousness deals with right behavior. God is concerned about your behavior and what you do. You cannot do any and everything and say that you are uh, 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 Jesus' servant or Jesus is your Lord. And you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Spirit abiding in you to be able to overcome and to do the things that I'm, I'm suggesting or teaching in this Bible class. Notice what he says. Verse 25, uh, for Ephesians 4 and 25, Wherefore put off lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, uh, for we are members one of another. Be angry, sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So it's telling you how to live a victorious life. And the way to live a victorious life, you have to put off the old man and put on the righteous and holy man that was created in Christ Jesus uh, and live a sanctified life according to the word of God. In order to do this, in my closing here, uh, in order to do this, what we're talking about here today, you have to first repent of all of your sin, get baptized in the name of Jesus, and be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Then that puts you into the body of Christ. And now you're able to work out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling. And what I mean by that is, now because your life has changed, you set your mind on things that are above. And what that means is, you have to fast, you have to pray, you have to read God's word. Uh, the Bible says, Jesus said, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And as you, as you are setting your mind on the things that be of God, those evil and wicked mindsets will disintegrate. Those evil and wicked desires, they will be mortified. They will be put to death, amen? So that you, the more you walk in the spirit, the more you fully become the, uh, uh, the, the, the spirit engulfs your life. The more you live after God, the more you want of God. The more you pray and seek God, the more you want to pray and seek God. And, and this is how you maintain that victory 
that is in Jesus Christ. This is how you live a holy life. You got to be, uh, the scripture tells us that we should want to become deeper in the word, deeper in our relationship with Jesus. When I first got saved, uh, I thought I had a good relationship with the Lord, but I didn't realize uh, my relationship isn't where it ought to have been until I started going after him and realizing the more I went after him, the more that there is in him that I need and desire. Uh, when you go after the Lord, uh, he'll open up your understanding. He'll give you wisdom and knowledge of, of, of what you need to be not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. Um, last verse in uh, the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter number three, my God, Philippians chapter number three and uh, verse number 10. Notice what Paul says. He says, he says, uh, Philippians three and 10, Paul says that I want to know him, <laughs> talk about Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto the death, if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Paul said, I want to know him. Do you want to know him? Hallelujah. And how do you know him? By walking with him. Uh, the scripture says, if I abide in him and he abides in me, I can ask what I will and it shall be. And the more you, you, you get yourself wrapped up, tied up, tangled up with Jesus, the, the, the enemy can't do anything with you. Uh, the devil can't stop you. My God. And, and uh, you, you'll lose, if you allow me to say it this way, if you walk with the, the Lord, you'll lose all fear that uh, of the devil. He would become insignificant, insignificant in your life. My God, because he literally is. He's insignificant. You don't uh, uh, negate him. You don't, you don't uh, uh, not be aware of his presence. But uh, it's like when you get victory over somebody that, that, that used to irk you, uh, you can go around them and it'd be no problem. My God. And that's the kind of victory we want to have with Christ Jesus. That we can go into any situation. We can go around any type of temptation, but as long as we are in Christ, uh, it's not a problem. It's not an issue. I can go around people that's smoking and cussing. They can let that, that my desire. I don't want to be there, but if I do, I'm not going to come out smoking and cussing and lying and cheating and stealing. Why? Because I've been delivered. I've been set free. Now, uh, I manifest that freedom and I keep that freedom by continually building myself up in Christ Jesus and walking in the victory that he has manifested for my life. If I choose to fall out of that victory, if I choose to go after the things that are of the world, I will lose out on the victory that is in Christ Jesus. But if I keep my mind made up, if I keep my heart fixed, if I deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live soberly and righteously down here in this present world, I will attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I will attain, hallelujah, that salvation that, that, that is ultimate of receiving a crown where God will say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter ye into the joy of the Lord. We will be like uh, the apostle Paul who said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. He said, not only to me, but to all those that love his appearing. 
So we certainly do thank God uh, for this Bible class on today. And I pray that you will share this with somebody and so that uh, they can be edified, built up, and set free themselves. And I also want you to pray for Christian ministries, pray for me, uh, the pastor, pray for the body of Christ, that we'll always be in the will of God, that we'll do the things that are necessary so that God can always be pleased and say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter ye into the joy of the Lord. And if this ministry has blessed you, uh, please do not hesitate uh, to sow seed into this uh, kingdom. Uh, you can use our Tithely uh, app uh, off our website. Uh, just go to Tithely and uh, put in Christian Ministries, Apostolic Faith Church, and follow the instructions and give. You also uh, can mail in your tithes and your offerings to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508, or swing by the church and drop them off in our drop box. I uh, want you to also remember uh, that we were doing two services in June, but now we've dropped down to one service in July. Uh, and that service will begin at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, so we'll still have our midweek Bible study, 6 o'clock. Um, but we're also uh, just making that change on a Sunday morning, uh, 10 a.m. So pass the word, 10 a.m., Christian Ministries, the place to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we thank God for you. May heaven smile upon you. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this word on today. We thank you for this anointing that you've given unto us. Bless each and every soul under the sound of my voice. Lord, continue to manifest the victory in our lives and make this word palatable uh, to those that are here that so they may be not only hearers, but doer of your word. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and open new doors, new pathways and new horizons to greater success. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen.